All right, uh, let's uh, start. So um, I'm Alexander, I contribute to Yocto. I'm famous for criticizing people's patches. <laughs> um, so the subject today is um, that big goal of uh, the Yocto project that you have a, um, a short and nice configuration file and uh, from that file, you produce a complete uh, uh, Linux um, Linux-based or maybe Zephyr-based product. So first, uh, just a quick recap. Um, this is all of uh, Yocto on one nice uh, slide. So the inputs are the layers that define uh, define what you can build, and then there is your build configuration that describes how you build it and how you build it usually means you need to pick a distribution out of choices defined in the layers and you need to pick a target machine. And then you tell BitBake, I want this image and what you get um, on some other target and what you get is um, images, packages, um, S-bombs, uh, like a li license manifests, some test reports for QA if it runs tests. So everything that makes up a complete product that you can ship to the market, right? So the problem uh, that uh, we want to solve is that these parts on the left, you need to set them up and setting them up is cumbersome. Uh, there is no standard solution. There are like third party external things that you can use, but nothing that uh, is an out of the box experience with the Octo. Okay, so this is what uh, we are um, currently working on. This is that out of the box experience. So, um, called BitBake Setup. So it starts with a uh, configuration repository. It's a short and simple Git repository that contains a number of configuration files um, that describe uh, what what you want to build, and then you pick one of those files. You give it to a tool called Bitback Setup, and Bitback Setup produces um, those layers on disk, the build configuration, and the short build. Dot, uh, sh script that um, you run it and it would do everything else like run bitbake or whatever else needs to be done. So um, uh, I draw some like solid lines and dotted lines. So the solid stuff is uh, already available in the latest LTS and the dotted stuff is a prototype currently in review. Um, so BitBake setup is made of setting up the layers, uh, setting up the build, and um, also there's going to be a facility called um, BitBake Fragments, which is those nice short uh, snippets uh, everybody likes to put in local.conf to tweak the build to how they like it. Um, so we want to formalize it and uh, make it um, something that's um, officially supported and done in the same way for everybody. Um, right, so um, BitBack setup, um, uh, the prototype is available in that repository and I also posted it to BitBack Devel. It has four commands. Um, so list, uh, it will list your available configurations with a short description in it, um, in, like initialize the build, uh, status, it uh, then would check if the build you have previously set up, um, if the config build configuration needs to be updated, maybe because somebody changed something in the top level configuration or some of the layers have received new commits if it's a, like floating revision in the configuration and the update will actually bring it up to date. Um, um, so the configuration repository, it's also like a prototype, but it's uh, on GitHub as well. As you can see, it's 
just a couple of uh, JSON files, like two different configurations. Uh, so I want to show you what's inside the JSON files because that's um, important. Um, so there are two sections in it. One is describing where do we get the layers and what are the revisions for each of them and where do we place them on, on disk relative to each other. The other is actually what do we want to build. Uh, so there is a configuration section and bit bake setup subsection so that you can later put other tools in it if you want. Um, and the default configuration is that we take a default build template from Pokey, those BB layers conf and um, local conf dot template files and the targets are core image, mid -bay core image minimal. And now it's, um, I should stop uh, hand waving and I um, would like um, to do a demo, but um, I'm not gonna uh, show my uh, like laptop screen. I just want to keep this on screen for people online and they can replicate it. So if you are interested to play with, I encourage you to pull out your laptops and uh, follow these commands because uh, that way I could really embarrass myself in front of everybody. Um, so, yeah, we uh, start by cloning BitBake. It's like a bootstrap BitBake um, for setting up things and the actual Yocto builds will use like the bit bake bundled with Pocky. So how much disk space is this going to do? Huh? How much disk space is this going to eventually use? Well, if you um, you see. You don't have to run build sh to completion because that will take on a laptop like that. It will take until the heat death of the universe. <laughs> um, because I didn't bother to set up a state. I'm sorry about that. Um, but it's uh, as long as the build starts, you know that it will keep running. So you can press Control C. In uh, Chris's talk earlier, one of the things he did with lunch, uh, there were some things in this lunch command that he liked. Um, was it show configuration or show? It was eat. Show things that it could build. Yeah. So uh, when you type lunch, it gives you a list. Of, it used to give you a list of options. Yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering if this will give you a list of, you know, targets that you can run. <laughs> Take your laptop and run the bitback setup list. Okay, well, I'm going to have to do that later because mm -hmm. I can't multitask very well. So, yeah, uh, I got to the point where you, like, run list and you should see that there are two configur built configurations available. One is says uh, Pokey restaurants distribution with Alex fixes and another will just build you Kirkstone. Lady goes first. Yeah. Oh. Maybe your comment suggestion is to use something else as JSON for config because you cannot put comments to it to explain. Uh, for example, for example. Um, YAML is not available in the Python standard library, sadly. Okay. Yes, but Jason is. Um, I guess one aesthetic note, could could you not call it build.sh, just call it build? It's a prototype. Okay. We can fix this. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm now running init, and you should be seeing that it's uh, cloning the uh, Pokey repository. 
according to instructions in the JSON. And these slides are on Indico if you want to look at this slide later and try this in the privacy of your own room. <laughs> yeah, but this is more fun, isn't it? Uh, I'm definitely going to try it. I think there's many similarities uh, regarding uh, this is just JSON where repo uses a manifest with XML. Yes, of course, and uh, there is CAS, and uh, yeah. of course they all uh, look roughly similar. Yeah. If you if you want to clone some layers. So in reality, it, it, we say it's a layer on top. So what's the big difference between using repo and then just have a manifest XML? Repo comes from Google, and a lot of people hate it with a passion. <laughs> to answer your question, repo only checks out the repositories. It doesn't create a uh, biblayers.conf. It doesn't create a local.conf. It doesn't uh, uh, do setup environment. So yeah, it's a very small set, subset of what you need. <laughs> But well, how does it differ from CAS? That's, what, what does this add to CAS that CAS it, doesn't have except it, for this command? First of all, if you like CAS, please use it. Um, this comes out of the box and it has a different philosophy, if you will. CAS is an integrated solution that uh, kind of um, implements everything. This is built from small pieces and you can use or not use pieces that you don't want to use. And it's just a part of uh, Yocto itself. Yeah, um, somehow I'm involved with CUS, but anyway. Um, I'm wondering from more from, not from much from how it's being built together, but more from the user perspective scenarios you want to cover with this. this is, I think the question also I raised back then in the discussion on Yocto list. So what do you commit on evol evolving right now? I can see that to a certain degree. What do you want to go in the future? So for example, I'm seeing now the, the list thingy plus the call of the available options as one element. Is this your vision of um, replicating CAS menu, the interactive part of the selection of configuration, of configuration options? Or is there something where you think ahead, where you also want to go? Or you say, this is something I don't want to address? I mean, for me, the key question is how far should this take the approach, the users from user perspective, and, and what do you think, for good reasons, possibly, I don't want to address with this approach? Because I always point out, if you want to go further, then please also think ahead if it still holds. I'm still saying that CAS was lucky in certain decisions to take by chance, more or less, some process which took us that far. Um, which doesn't mean that it has to be taken this way necessarily for your approach, but the key point for me is really clearly say this is what I want to cover and this is definitely not what I consider to be as part of the native approach. Well, we need to get uh, these four commands and the uh, config fragments implemented and landed in master and then we can think what the next steps would be, whether that's nice interactive menus, what are the default configurations that people will get when they start using it as a like new way to enter the Yocta world, right? Um, because the current way is pretty horrible. Um, we need to uh, get some working code to land in master and then there can be a discussion of what, where, where it's taken from there, maybe container support or things that people need in production environments. Uh, when I see, uh, you can say, the JSON file, you have a small repo with a, you can say the map, with a repo, with a uh, Pokey Alex build setup. Is it possible also to have, uh, you can say, your layers there, for example, a, a local BSP or local software layer, because else I think if they are in a separate Git archive, and I, I just thinking out loud, uh, then you need to point to a specific revision, and then you always need to update this JSON file to point to that new one, or else if you just point to a branch, it, you cannot, the day after. Yeah. The day after, it might be changed if you just point to a brand, so the reproducibility. So, what are your thoughts about that part? So, 
we adopted, <clears throat> we adopted setup layers right after you released it um, in order to have a pinning mechanism so that developers, <clears throat> you know, there's a chief architect on a project and then the rest of the developers shouldn't be mucking about in, in the way the layers are configured. So, so we going, use a similar thing like build.sh and it calls setup layers from within and mm -hmm. looks at the JSON. If the layer isn't there, it clones it. If it is there, it makes sure it's pinned to the approved commit. And then later on, we can take a very careful regimented approach to updating the setup layers JSON file um, and assessing all the change. Uh, I have to note that if you are uh, following those steps, you should be running seeing this uh, well familiar bit bake uh, thing with progress bars by now. Oh, I got a Python exception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do need uh, to have dependencies for running bit bake. That, uh, well, it was a get error, so I don't know. What, mm -hmm. Um, but uh, for uh, like the layers in JSON, there are like two tracks you could follow. One is a pinned revisions, and the other is floating revisions. And floating revisions are used for doing test builds with uh, latest things in all the layers or some of the layers. And pinned revisions are for reproducibility purpose, so uh, it's super important that things don't shift behind your back and uh, uh, that if you pin the revisions and have a mechanism and process to like um, do new pinnings, then you will ensure this. What, what is your vision for what update is supposed to do? Um, uh, well, there is implementation uh, of update. It um, when you run it, it goes to the um, configuration repository, it checks if it has changed, and um, if it uh, has changed, then it pulls the new configuration file. It prints you a comparison, so you know what changed, and it um, adds it to a local Git repo, and it. Uh, makes a commit, so you have a history of um, all those changes locally as well. And uh, after that, it still goes to all the layers and checks that those layers maybe also need to be updated. And status does all the same things, except it just does the check but not the update. Um, so this works, I'm just not... Um, uh, doing a demo of it for time constraints. Uh, the reason why I asked before, for example, we have some application teams uh, doing application, of course, and a bot surveying those. And so it updates the, we say, recipes twice a day or something like that with a new revision, builds everything, runs through our test and everything like that, and being committed to our, you can say. And in that situation, it means that our you can say JSON would need to be updated twice a day uh, because uh, our own software layer now has a new version of our main application integrated. Uh, yeah, it won't have to be if it refers to branches and not specific uh, Git commits. Then it, it would just keep pulling the latest commits yeah. from all the layers. But we would like to always, you can say, each commit needs to be completely reproducible. So I'll never do like uh, you can say, I'll never do a floating. I always well, do a specific. Uh, uh, yeah, in that case, your CI can uh, run a test build, see if it succeeded or not, and then uh, like rewrite the JSON if it has succeeded. Yeah. So I think what would be good is if the uh, with bake would then produce the JSON file with the pinned versions always automatically. So that you can in CI easily use that. I mean, uh, yes, replace. it already does this. <laughs> there is a bitback layers create uh, layers uh, uh, con for something like that that writes out uh, that part of the JSON that's just the layers uh, and not the bitback setup part. They are um, I made it an extension of the like layer setup. One minute. Because before there was a question about switching away from JSON uh, to YAML, 
Uh, but it isn't in the standard library. Uh, what about uh, Tomer? T O M L. It has comments, it's human readable, and it's in the standard library. Uh, since which version of Python? I don't know. Pretty, pretty recent, like, like 3.12. 3.11. Ah. If I'm not mistaken, it should be 312. Uh, yeah, I think that's a bit too recent, but in the future we could um, have something that can take both JSON and Toml. Yeah, I think you can also convert Toml to JSON. Yeah, the reason uh, this is JSON is when we started with this, only JSON was in the standard library. Less than salt, call for less than salt. Uh, just real quick, Alex, what struggles have you had so far in uh, getting this upstream? Okay, the number one struggle is that you, if you get, ask five people about their opinion on how this should be, you get something like nine different opinions. And uh, you've seen this already in this room when people ask, why not my favorite tool, why not this other favorite tool, why not this, why not that. Uh, I think it's good to kind of have a clear idea in your own head and just push forward with it. Yeah, we're, when, we're, when are we going to get the AI version of this? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, one feature that probably isn't addressed and may not be addressed is being able to alter BB class behavior from the point of, in your case, Pocky Alex. Um, that's one I, I feature I don't think anybody's addressed here. Uh, which, feature, which feature, sorry? Be able to alter, when you run your own build, be able to alter BB class behavior. So if you're in a really regimented, highly controlled build, you may not want to take in all of the build behavior changes um, for a particular release. Um, there's no BB append for that. There is no BB append for BB class, and that's on purpose, because that's a uh, road to insanity. There, there is a use case for it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Four, four, yeah. four that's, reasons that's how we've of it. sticking with the code of contact that Stephen and Tim um, apply upon us. I want to thank you, Alex, for your contribution, but I'm going to chop you off now, okay? <laughs>